Hey all, Orthio here. Uh, so, two days ago, as of the time of this recording, I played my set against Hipmonlee for the 2020 RBY Classic. Um, and I just wanted to run through one of my games. Um, I won't spoil how the set went, I won't spoil how the other game or games, you never know, um, in the series went, because it was actually, aside from this game, it was excruciatingly close. So I recommend just watching it for, you know, entertainment or whatever, if that's your thing. If not, do what you want. It's your life. I don't care. Um, yeah. So anyway, this, this game, I really wanted to go over it just because, um, like I thought I was playing well on kind of the small scales, making, you know, good, you know, good decisions, that kind of thing. But this match... I really fucked up strategically in terms of like, you know, in terms of strategy, it's, you know, what do you want to win? How are you going to achieve it? What steps are you going to take? That kind of thing. That's where I fucked up. And to me, that's unacceptable because I love thinking about that stuff. And I, I, you know, that that's my kind of thing. I just really enjoy it. So when I screw that up, I, w I want to, you know, dig into it and kind of get to the bottom of it, I guess. So, with that in mind, um, let's get cracking with the battle. So for teams, Hitmonlee is running Gengar in the lead position, Executor, Cloyster, um, Chansey, Zapdos, and Tauros. And I'm running Alakazam in the lead position, Venusaur, Jolteon, Slowbro, Snorlax, and Tauros. So, neither of us running standard teams at all <laughs> like hitmonlee drops lax which i um is not something i agree with at this stage lax is something that i would always include on my team it's just whenever i build a team without it it just feels like i'm making some sort of compromise and that it's a substandard team which i don't know like you can get by without lax but it just feels like a missed opportunity kind of thing. Lax is just so good. Um, arguably, you could say the same thing about Chansey, but obviously I disagree because I'm not running it here. Um, one thing to note with this team is that I have tested it quite a bit, but when I was testing it, it it's not a team you can just pick up and play. It's because it's so radically different from, you know, conventional RBY teams. It's like... Your usual decision-making heuristics don't really work as well. So it takes takes a little bit to get used to the team. And certainly when I first picked up this team, um, I was getting a lot of bad losses to bad players on ladder. Um, it was quite ugly. Like, it, 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 event it eventually turned around and I'm satisfied with the team as it is. But um, it's not a team you can just pick up and play. But I decided to do that anyway because, I don't know, I just felt like it. Um, that was a mistake because I haven't been bringing it in tournament matches a lot lately. Um, so it's been a while since I used this team, so I'm a bit rusty with it. Um, Hitmon Lee's team... Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about it. I guess it's very... I guess it's rather defensive in nature and obviously leaning on Zapdos then as a means of busting through the opposing team, but you know it is what it is anyway let's get cracking so obviously lead position i see gengar i'm running bloody venusaur so my first thought is crap i've got to get rid of this gengar like of all the things the one time i run venusaur in a tournament and some and he brings gengar as a lead like that lead gengar has all but vanished and no, it just happens to crop up when I'm running Venusaur. But the key thing is, I look at that and I think, right, I've got to get rid of Gengar um, in order to activate my Venusaur. And, you know, that's a perfectly valid line of thinking. But I do recall in the later on in the match, it actually does come back to haunt me. Because the flip side of that is, oh, he's got a Gengar my Venusaur isn't as valuable anymore. Anyway, so he obviously, Hitmonlee obviously switches out, goes to his Chansey, 
Um, all pretty standard. I mean, the trendy play these days is to switch Chansey into par paralysis leads, and really Gengar is actually pretty good at that because even though I could theoretically go for Psychic if I'm really paranoid about not paralyzing the opposing Chansey, Gengar's advantage is that it shuts down Jinx, which is obviously, you know, nice because you want to bait Paralysis, but you don't necessarily want to give the opponent sleep. Um, yeah, so anyway, yeah, he absorbs par Paralysis with his Chansey, uh, weaken it a bit, and then bring in my Lax. All pretty standard. He reveals Cloister, I go Earthquake. Um, yeah, so Earthquake there, obviously scouting for counter but also covering a potential Gengar switch in which is highly unlikely because anyone in that position would go for Earthquake you know to scout for counter to cover a possible Gengar switch in it's all very unlikely so close to a safe switch in here but you know best to cover all the boxes and close is not threatening my team yet um, so I make a good double switch go to Snorlax again go for Earthquake um, my plan is to go for Earthquake as much as possible because I don't want to let that Gengar in for free and let it get potential sleep off. Um, and until I kind of have the information on how Hitmonlee wants to play that, you know, I've got to, got to err on the side of caution, right? Um, yeah, so Earthquake, even though it does like nothing to Cloyster, still go for it. Um, Clamp. Yeah, whoop de doo He weakens my Zam a bit. Um, that's not a huge deal. And he goes for Sing here, which, to be honest, I think is an interesting choice because I've I've already told you that he has Executor on his team. So Gengar and Executor, and now Sing Chansey. It's that's a lot of sleep, and that's a lot of sleep in an environment where sleep claws is a thing. Anyway, it. Obviously, it goes just fine from here. Um, well, not really. Sing is such an unreliable move, and I do go on the offensive as a result of him trying to use Sing. Um, get a very predictable Thunder Wave on his Executor. Um, yeah, so at this point, it's looking like I'm pretty much in control. I'm dictating how this match is going um, and making all the right reads, to be quite honest. Well, Aside from the obvious cloister read, because again, I want to cover all my bases and make sure that Gengar doesn't come in. And look, I mean, I'm slowly chipping away at that cloister, so it's not a huge deal. Um, yeah, so clamp, kind of meaningless. Switches in Gengar, which I find okay. It's not really interesting. He was obviously expecting me to double back to Lax there, which I didn't. Um, so good job me, I outsmarted Hit Hitmonlee for a turn. It'd be great if it con contributed to a win, but, you know, so it goes. So he goes back to Chansey, I go to sm my Snorlax then, he's already predicted a double, so it's obvious he's not going to, like, well, not all, technically not obvious, but it's unlikely that he's going to predict another double. So that's what I'll go for, because it's not expected. Anyway, it's abundantly clear at this point that Earth that Hitmonlee's not going to risk the Gengar switch in, especially because I've gone for Earthquake, what, three times now? It's unreasonable to um, bring Gengar in when I've shown that I'm just going to spam Earthquake. That's what I've shown so far, so you wouldn't bring it in. Um, but this, this time I decide to switch it up because... I know the Cloyster's coming in and it's weak, and I know if Executor comes in, which it could on an Earthquake, Earthquake's not going to do a lot. So I go for the Body Slam here, and I get lucky. I get the pa Paralysis, um, so that um, Cloyster is as good as dead, but follow-up Body Slam does enable him to bring in his Gengar, which uh, misses the Hypnosis. So I'm still cooking. Um, yeah, all, all the chips, all everything's in my corner. Um, but finally lands a Sing on my Snorlax. That's why Sing Chansey is so good, because it sleeps, it puts Snorlax to sleep, and 
you know, it even even if even when you see it coming, even though it's unreliable, it's still very difficult to deal with. Um, so that works out for him. Um, I go to Slowbro and start boosting up because at this point, um, that Chansey is either Seismic Toss or Ice Beam. If it's Ice Beam, mate, I boost up for free. Nothing, nothing he can do about it. He'll have to swap out. Um, mm. If it's Seismic Toss, he can wear me down, but it's still an adv advantageous situation for me. So I'm going to boost, go for Surf, in case he wants to switch out, which he doesn't. Goes for Seismic Toss here. That's important. Seismic Toss means he's not Ice Beam. Um, yeah, that's the full set that's revealed at this point. So definitely no Ice Beam. That's going to come back into play later as one of my errors. Anyway, um, he sends in his executor. I kind of don't really do anything about the explosion. I was, I recall at the time I was a bit wary of playing, playing mind games in that regard, but, and, you know, especially like trading a full health executor. I mean, sure, Slowbro would probably get more value than that Executor, but it's still not a bad trade. Um, anyway, Tauros, Revenge Kill. Of course, I'm not going to switch out. It's a Paralyzed Slowbro at 14%. There's, what am I going to do with it? Um, so we go to a Tauros Ditto, blah, blah, blah. That's whatever. I get the crit, um, which is nice. And it's at this point that Hitmonlee decides to sacrifice his Cloister. Obviously, Earthquake covers a potential Gengar switch in. If I'd gone for Body Slam, it would have let it in for free. Whereas Earthquake, it still kills everything. Why wouldn't I go for it? Um, and brings in a Zapdos. And I go to my Jolteon. Because obviously, Jolteon covers Zapdos. And then following that, go for Double Kick, preempting a Chansey switch in. Um which he just doubles out to Chansey anyway. That works for him, you know, but it's no great loss for me either. Um, so obviously with Snorlax asleep, I don't really have any good means of dealing with this Chansey. So I'm just going to stay in with my Jolteon, deal as much damage as possible, um, potentially hacks my way through it. Um, I actually can't remember if I do. We'll find out, I guess. Um... Yeah, but as you can see... Oh, that's right! My god, what a 255! Well, it's not a 255 in the sense of... It's not random luck you could theoretically know in advance that the, so that the soft world was going to fail. But, in practice, I don't think anyone's actually memorized those HP points, so it's practically random. So yeah... Obviously, switch out, so... Oh, I didn't didn't go for the um, Thunder Wave. That's rather interesting. I decided to keep up the pressure, and as you can see, you know, I stay in for the Thunder Wave, um, stay in for the damage, and he blows up. What the fuck was I thinking? My god. That's a rhetorical question, by the way. I know exactly what I was thinking. I was like, right, I have to get rid of this Gengar so I can activate my Venusaur. Look at what it cost me. Why did I do that? Because he's revealed his entire team. He's got a Zapdos. And I'm like, yeah, I want to activate my Venusaur. Venusaur's not going to do shit against Zapdos. What? Ugh. I got tunnel vision on activating my Venusaur. So I overlooked the fact that this just isn't a good matchup for Venusaur. On top of that... Actually, no. I'll, I'll get to that later. But, like... On top... Another thing is that Jolteon does so much work here. Because it hard, hard counters um, Zapdos. And it just pressures everything else really well. And I'm like, yeah. I'm just going to trade it. What was I thinking? My god. Ugh. 
See, this isn't so, this isn't as much insightful commentary as it is me just venting, berating myself for my stupidity. But you know, let's proceed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Tauros, Zapdos, whatever. Um, yeah. So obviously, with Venusaur. I didn't want to risk going against Zapdos and Tauros can obviously potentially hack its way through. Obviously that didn't work out. Um, Alakazam, I didn't want to risk, didn't want to risk going to Zam and letting his Chansey in for free because obviously I can't exert enough pressure against Chansey to stop it from healing. I mean, I can try swapping out to something, but um, yeah, it's still not ideal. So obviously he's going to preserve his Zapdos, and here I go to Snor okay, Snorlax, but what I'm looking for at this point is to bring Venusaur in on Tauros. That's my second big screw-up, because remember earlier, I noted that Chansey had Seismic Toss and not Ice Beam. Venusaur could do so much work against Chansey, and I'm like, nah, I want to bring it in against Zapdos, and look what happens. Hyper Beam, crit. There goes my Venusaur. And that, that pretty much cost me the game. <laughs> um, yeah, but like, even then, bringing it in against Tauros was not an optimal play. Um, like, I actually clicked Sleep Powder in that situation. Um, obviously, if Hyper Beam hadn't crit, I would have put his Tauros to sleep. Would have been guaranteed, wouldn't have missed because of the Hyper Beam glitch. Hi well, Hyper Beam Sleep glitch. Um, and then it's really an awkward position. The one thing I couldn't do is kill that Tauros straight away because then his Zapdos would come in for free and I'd just lose pretty much because Venusaur would die. Alakazam probably doesn't have enough firepower to break through Chansey. Um, so that was a losing position. Um, so what do I do? Do I go... Do I try boost up, maybe? Um, probably not. But it... Like, there wasn't really a winning position there. Which is why... Uh, I should have brought the Venusaur in against Chansey. Because what's the worst Chansey's going to do? It's going to paralyze me. So what? I boost up with, swords, with sword stance and... I kill Chansey, I kill Tauros, I deal a ton of damage to Zapdos, and even then, um, Zapdos, I've got enough bulk to live a drill peck if necessary. Um, maybe not after a seismic toss, I'd have to calculate that. But, if I'd brought Venusaur in against Chansey, this match would have been different. And, to be honest, that was just an oversight on my part. Like, I overlooked the fact that because I was still playing from the mindset of, I want to maximize my Venusaur. Obviously, to maximize Venusaur, you need to keep it free of paralysis, because that's how you maximize anything, except possibly Chansey. So, that was my mindset. And you can see that I had serious tunnel vision for this Venusaur. I didn't even build this team around Venusaur. I was like, right, I'm going to build a team around Jolteon, and then I just happened to have come up with this idea previously and I was like right I'm gonna run that Venusaur Jolteon Slowbro um yeah so it's like so frustrating to me that I got tunnel vision in that way and just screwed myself over and then anyway Venusaur dies and it's a foregone conclusion from this point like um yeah, even though I do get lucky and break through Chansey, it gets the paralysis off. That's all Taurus needs to finish me off. And even if Taurus had missed, Zapdos probably would have finished me off as well. Um, yeah, and that's the game. As I said, I won't spoil the rest of the match, match matches, whatever, rest of the set, because it, w it does make for really good viewing. Maybe I'll do another video on it, but... Um, yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest. Anyway, have a good one. See ya.